So I want to build a setup to work Oscar 100 s how to but I don't want to break the bank. Is it possible? Let's see. Welcome to the Ham Radio Junkie with me, Keith. Now I've got a real interest in working amateur radio satellites, so much so that I've produced some videos for you to watch on YouTube so you can get started on amateur satellites as well. Now one of the satellites I haven't had much experience of is Oscar 100 or SHAL 2. But what makes this so special? Well, SHAL 2 is the first amateur radio geostationary satellite and it was launched in November 2018. It's owned by the Qatar satellite company SHAL Sat and its primary mission is to supply television services to the Middle East and North Africa. Thanks to collaborative working between SHALSAT and the Qatari Amateur Radio Society, amateur radio enthusiasts have been authorised to have equipment on board the satellite. Now this satellite, unlike a normal low orbit satellite at 400 miles above the Earth, sits at 22,000 miles. And if we remember back to our previous videos, we understand that the footprint or the coverage area of the satellite is dictated by the altitude, in other words, the distance from the Earth that the satellite is. So, for example, we can see here on the left, over Argentina, the International Space Station. And that sits somewhere around about 250 miles above the Earth. You can observe that its footprint is relatively small compared to that of Oscar 100, which is in the middle and covers such a vast distance. Because of this, amateurs within the footprint can work vast distances, and because the satellite is geostationary, in other words in one position, the satellite is able to be used 24 hours a day with relative ease. Now radio amateurs are very fortunate that on board the Oscar 100 satellite are two different transponders. The first is a narrowband linear transponder for use of analog signals on SSB and also CW and a wideband digital transponder for digital modes and amateur television signals. My current intention is not to operate on the wideband digital section but on the narrowband section operating CW and SSB. So what sort of equipment am I going to need? Well, I've decided to separate this into two different parts. The receive part and then the transmit part. So let's have a look at what we're going to need now. Technically, I don't actually need a receiver. And the reason for that is that it is possible to listen to Oscar 100 via a web SDR. And this is it. Bratislava, the capital city. My name is Bill. Bravo India Lima Lima. And the grid locator is Japan Nancy 88 Mexico Foxtrot. No oh, copy. Uh, G4 RQI uh, OM3BD. Hey, Oscar Mike, Harry Bravo Delta. Germany 4 Romeo Quebec India. Good evening to you, uh, Bill. Nice to meet you on the satellite for the first time. Um, a very nice signal, five and nine. Uh, my name is Dave or David. Dave or David. And I'm located in the north of England, just outside of the city of Leeds. At Volima, Echo Echo Delta Sugar. And the very good locator square is India Oscar 93 India Romeo. So there you are. It's possible to listen to Oscar 100 using the web SDR and I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go and have a listen yourself. Despite being able to use the web SDR, I've decided that I do actually want both a transmit and a receive station at my home location. 
So let's have a look at what the receive chain looks like. The first component in the chain is actually part of the transmit antenna and that's the potty antenna or patch of the year antenna. It sits in the receive line as it does connect directly to the LNB. And this is what the potty antenna looks like both in its unconstructed format and then constructed ready to go on to the actual dish. So from the potty antenna it goes into the LMB and this is the LNB I chose. This is the octagon LMB that I've chosen with the twin feed at the bottom although I shall only be using one for this application. Once the signal leaves the LMB it then goes into a preamplifier which offers between 16 and 20 decibel of gain and this is the one that I've chosen. As you can see it offers a frequency range of between 47 megs and 2400 megs so it's fine for the 739 megahertz that is coming out of the LNB. After coming out the preamplifier the signal then goes into a low pass filter. This blocks out unwanted signals above 800 megahertz. This is the filter that I've chosen and as you can see it will allow the 739 megahertz that's coming from the LMB via the preamp to pass straight through while blocking such things as cellular telephone transmissions. Now for the LMB to work and receive a signal it does need a power supply and we use what's known as a bias T to supply this and this is what one looks like. The LMB supplies the power down the coaxial cable to the LMB while simultaneously being transparent to any radio signal. So the final components in the receive chain is an SDR receiver, in my case an SDR play, and the software to actually decode it, which in my case is SDR Uno. And that is the end of our receive chain. So let's have a look at the transmit chain. The first part of the transmit chain is obviously something to generate a transmit signal and in my case this will be an FT817. Its relative low power works well with the transverter I've selected. It also enables me to transmit on 432 MHz or 144 MHz and the transverter I've selected enables me to select either of those frequencies to use to transmit with. So the transverter I've selected is from DX Patrol. It operates with a DC input of 10 to 18 volts and provides 250 milliwatts of output power. Now clearly this isn't going to be enough to reach the satellite and for that we're going to need an amplifier and this is the amplifier I've selected. Advertised and sold as a Wi-Fi booster this amplifier suggests that it will operate and give out 8 watts of power. However in practice, radio hams have found that this amplifier offers anywhere between 4 and 6 watts of power. Despite that, this is more than enough going into the antenna and onto the dish to actually make contact with the satellite. So looking back at our transmit chain, you can see that our signal has come from the Yesu radio into the transverter and into the amplifier and its final stop will be the patch antenna. The final construction of the patch antenna will look like this and as you can see a hole has been drilled into the LMB and that then goes on to the waveguide, in other words the copper tube. So all that's missing is the final two components and the first one is a dish and I'm going to select either an 80 or a 100 centimeter dish and I'm going to use Ultraflex 13 by Messi and Poloni to connect all the equipment up. Now, it is important that I keep the cable run as short as possible, so I'm hoping to mount the equipment next to the actual dish and use anywhere between 1 to 1.5 metres of Ultraflex to connect it all together. So there you go, that's my next ham radio project. Building a setup so I can work Oscar 100 the first geostationary ham radio satellite that we've got. 
As I go along, I'll post videos to show you how I'm progressing. And who knows, maybe you can start as well, and I'll work you on the satellite. If you like my content, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to hit the bell, then you'll be notified when I put new content up. Even give us a like, it lets me know that I'm doing stuff right. So, my name's Keith, my call sign is G0FEA, and I'm the Ham Radio Junkie. I'll catch you next time.